Welcome to Stacey Washington Now, where we are welcoming in one of my favorites when it comes to these topics on the UAW and labor. It's Mark Mix, president of the National Right to Work Committee. Mark, great to have you here. Stacey, good to be with you. I mean, you kept me up late at night. You got me uh, going here, and we usually talk on the phone, so I hope my face doesn't scare you finally. My five daughters say I've got a great face for radio, but this video thing, they uh, they urge me against it, but... Welcome. Good to be on with well, you. Well, the kids are always our, our toughest critics. The kids, they, they, they're blunt. They hold no criticism. But we still feed them and clothe them and house them and love them. So we will Amen. leave their criticism to the side. <laughs> so I'm so glad you're here to talk about this. You have the UAW president who is now basically coming clean and saying that the great majority of their members won't vote for Biden. Not a shock to me since Biden is trying to destroy the car industry. Yeah, absolutely. This was uh, this was an amazing statement by Sean Fain. You know, the the 14 members of the executive committee of the UAW last week gave their endorsement to Joe Biden. And then when Sean Fain was asked about it on Fox News on the Cavuto show, he said, look, we're glad to do this. But he goes, let me be clear. I understand that a great majority of our members will not vote for Biden. So the question remains, why in the world did you endorse him if the majority of your great majority of your members are not going to vote for him? Stacey, this is a result of compulsory forced unionism. I mean, these union b bosses have dramatic powers over the rank and file workers. And, and he was adamant about the fact that he doesn't care what the vote, what his members are going to do, but he was going to support Joe Biden for president, or at least the union was with their money. Yeah, so it's the endorsement is really a reflection of where the union places their uh, political dollars, isn't it? It's not, it's not really a reflection of what the membership wants. It's a reflection of who they're donating to. That's exactly right. And this endorsement well, comes along with probably millions of dollars in cash from the United Auto Workers Union and their PACs. And, and this is membership money that uh, union members will pay in. And yet he admits that a great majority will not support Biden. They'll vote, What he said to go on, he said they'll vote with their paychecks. And I think that's a pretty big indictment about Joe Biden's economics, don't you? Yeah. And, you know, what's also interesting is it's like voting for your enemy because Biden's EV mandates have really caused a lot of friction within the auto industry because there's a loss of money that's going on. These are businesses that really were operating at profitability and were doing very well during the Trump years. And without government intervention, by the way, we're talking about the U.S. auto industry record breaking profits during the Trump years. Uh, car sales were up. Families were buying cars for you know kids and family members, you know, basically, if you needed a vehicle, you could find it and you could buy it. And then you had the chip shortage. And now they're struggling under the weight of being forced to build EVs that Americans don't want to buy. And they were losing 30,000 per vehicle, some, some astronomical sum that was in the newspapers. They're talking about how they're losing all of this money per vehicle sold, even though there's like a, some kind of a rebate or subsidy that you can get if you buy an EV. So overall, it's a net loss for them. I can't believe they would ever endorse a person who would inflict that kind of pain upon their industry. Yeah, and, and not only that, Stacey, that's a great point, but not only that, but we know this, that an electric vehicle takes about 40% less labor to build. And, you know, the, you take, take away the internal combustion engine and the drivetrains, and basically you're going to have at least four out of 10 people that might be on an assembly line right now putting cars together that are no longer going to be needed with this transition to EVs. And you've got the government under Biden mandating that like 60% of all automobiles manufactured in the country need to be electric vehicles by 2032. Not only are they a loser from a standpoint of, of what the companies are losing on producing everyone, and they do get $7,500 tax credit from the taxpayers if they buy an EV. But even then, that still doesn't cover the losses that these companies are taking. And to your point, the losses the United Auto Workers members, rank and file members, will, will, will actually take if, if we make this transition. And now 60% of the vehicles they make are going to have to be EVs. And then let's not even talk about the Arctic freeze we just survived. Uh, Mark, <laughs> if 60% of the vehicles are EVs and we get an Arctic freeze, 60% of the people can't travel. You can't go buy milk or eggs or bread. You can't go pick up a family member who might be stranded in the snow. You can't move if you have a dead robot. 
Yeah, absolutely. The, the stories that came in from Chicago and Minnesota was that, I guess, two weeks ago, where you had these big hunks of metal just sitting there, can't be moved, can't be charged, can't be used to go get milk or groceries or whatever during a, a, a situation like that. I mean, I think, um, you know, we don't know the whole story. And the good news is it looks like there's a pushback coming on the whole climate change argument and the environmental sustainability arguments. I mean, not that we're not all for the environment and protecting it, but the idea of transferring from from you know natural gas, which they're attacking now, to windmills and, and solar cycles and then EVs, I think people are waking up to the fact that it's not going to work. Yeah, and it's also the systematic approach. If they're not attacking our gas stove, it's the gas in our cars or the combustion engines. If it's not the combustion engines, it's the dishwashers. If it's not the dishwashers, it's literally the coolant in air conditioning units. They've, they've had their, their heyday with that. They tried rulemaking on all of those things. They are forcing the auto industry to participate in their green energy boondoggle. And no one is talking about, Mark, the slavery, the forced child slavery that is involved in building the lithium batteries that are required for these cars. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's a really serious problem that no one wants to pay attention to. And then just the power that it takes to to build a battery. I mean, they are they are net energy uh, users, not neutral and not even savers of energy. They're net producers of energy. But look, this is about forced unionism. It's about Sean Fain with a political agenda that's out of step with his rank and file members. He admits that. But yet they're going to use the compulsory unionism power and the force from federal law that, that these members have to comply with the wishes of these 14 executive board members when it comes to supporting Joe Biden and these policies that will end up putting them out of work and sending probably most of our manufacturing perhaps to China. Yeah. And so the the uh, that's the, the big deal here. For me, Mark, the big mover here, aside from all of the other things we described, which make it completely untenable, the forced unionization is actually going to work against the people in the unions who need to earn a living to feed their kids and pay their mortgages because the work will be outsourced to our primary competitor, China, who they'll, they're also happy to take over any industry that we send to them because it gives them more control over our country. Um, we're, we're closing out here. We have such long chats on radio, but here on television, we have eight minutes. It's always so good to see you, Mark. And tell everybody where to find out more about the work that you're doing that's so needed. Yes, yeah, Stacey, thanks for the opportunity. You can find us on that amazing internet at www.nrtw.org. That's our foundation where you can get your legal rights and questions answered about that or nrtwc.org where you can find out about the legislation we're tracking, not only in Congress, but all across the country as it relates to forced unionism and more power for union officials. I love it. Thank you so much, Mark. Mark Mix, we will talk again soon. Have a wonderful afternoon. And we will Thanks, have Stacey. more Stacey Washington yep. now after this. Stay right there.